Hi, this is Chris Schrader from the UiPath Employer Branding Department, and my job is to build content like this podcast that documents our company culture, highlights the really interesting stories from some of the brilliant people we have working here, and just generally gets you excited about wanting to work here, hopefully. So this is the third episode in a series highlighting our Indian product department, specifically in the Bangalore office. Uh, In the last episode, we heard from a few of our engineers about the products they're working on, and now we're going to hear about some of the same products and some other ones uh, from the perspective of our product managers. So to start, let's dive into analytics. Our analytics team is focused on building dashboards that will help our customers have a better understanding of how their RPA processes are working and what they can do to improve them. My name's uh, Arun Ayer, and I'm a senior product manager uh, with UiPath. I primarily work with the RPA analytics platform here. Just to give a little bit of background, we have nearly uh, 3,000 customers now. Many of them are small and medium customers. They start out with their initial RPA development very gingerly, maybe with two robots or five robots or something like that. And it's nearly exactly three weeks is what I hear from the customer success team. The three weeks after they start development, they say, hey, you know, something's working. Now tell me what's happening. I have no idea what's happening with my RPA development. Can you help me out? We do offer some prepackaged tools to which could allow the customers to build their own dashboards and track KPIs and things, but they are quite hard to configure and not easy to maintain and manage. So a lot of that work comes back to our customer success teams who are repeatedly asked to build some dashboards and do similar kind of work to give our customers an overview of their own RPA deployment. So I am trying to figure out what are the right KPIs and metrics that need to be tracked along several axes, say efficiency, effectiveness, quality and control, just to take an example. Along these four axes, what would be the right KPIs that you would need to measure to know whether your RPA deployment is successful. How do you make it easy for the customer to just take a glance at this and know and you know point out very simply that, hey, this is what you need to look at. This is what's broken. This is what's going well. I start out by talking to my customers who are probably the sales team and the, and the customer success team and ask them, what are the common kinds of queries that you get? I do some customer demos. I go visit their sites and do some shadow marketing to see what they're doing with their RPA deployment. What are they struggling with? And what is an extremely repetitive or manual process that they use to currently get these KPIs and dashboards and I see uh, where I can help them with that. So I mean, to put it in a nutshell, I gather feedback and requirements from my clients and try to figure out whether I can build a solution to address those. The India setup is quite new. It's a fledgling setup. There are a bunch of challenges with alignment to the central offering that is based out of our tech center in Bucharest. Often things get done nearly to the end before we realize that there is a stumbling block which we could have addressed far earlier, maybe before development starts. And often that has to undergo a lot of rework. The other thing is that again, since this is a very new space, it started about two years ago, there are some veterans in the company who know a lot more about RPA, who understand our customers and know exactly what goes through the entire cycle from the RFP request for proposal right up to deployment and maintenance and upgrades and stuff. And probably we don't have that kind of insight yet. That is just cross-pollination and learning. So the more we interact and have meetings with the other teams, we get to understand uh, what could be the potential bottlenecks and solve around those. I'd say it's, it's essentially a knowledge gap which can be easily fixed through communication and training. So there's no fundamental organizational problem as such. Next, we'll talk about Human in the Loop, which tackles more complex processes that require a mix of robotic and human inputs. So I'm Sunil. I'm a principal engineering manager in the UiPath Bangalore engineering team. My name is Prakash. I'm the head of engineering in India. So human in the loop in general is the ability for customers to be able to employ what RPA gives you along with the ability to club your backend process automation. RPA in some sense is a, is a, is the leaf node of automation, which is it is running on your computer in the front end. It's, it's what human beings would be doing. Then there is a bunch of things that happens on the back end with APIs and other things which are all back end automation. It helps you bring these two things together and provides you the ability to have humans as well as bots collaboratively achieve automation, end-to-end automation. One of the challenges with RPA in general is the fact that it is front-end automation doesn't necessarily plug in the entire business li- business process lifecycle. So our business process lifecycle involves much more than just front-end stuff. It typically involves multiple human beings, multiple bots, all collaboratively working and solving a problem. Like for example, an employee onboarding process could be a month-long process with multiple departments involved and the process flow going from one department to another department to another department. We are able to automate processes end-to-end, but if there is a robot needs to make certain decisions, 
or robots need some input from the customers or the humans or whoever it is and right now i think we need to break it into two different processes kind of a thing the human in the loop will come in robots at any given time in a pause and say create a task for somebody in the company who could look at the task and say approve it or add more information for the robot to kind of process it and other things so robot can now pause give certain activities to the humans human can process that activity or the task then robot can pick it up from there and continue and if the next step there's another input needed from the human they can create another task or the activity for the human like that it can continue so the impact as in some sense from what i described is uh, should already have come out but it helps you achieve true end to end full complete automation which was not fully possible with just rpa in the mix so we are going from rpa to the next level of evolution with this whole human in the loop capability so that's what part of my team is working on that's something that's uh, one of the top things that our customers have been asking for from that sense it's uh, very empowering for me to know that i being uh, still about a year only in the company uh, getting a chance of working on a capability that's uh, heavily asked by our customers of course there are a m- bunch of engineering challenges to the whole thing the way uh, you would do it the technologies that we would use how do we put together this whole thing uh, how do we make it easy for our customers to put this together without having to re- learn something completely new so our customers are used to our products they're used to designing these processes rpa processes using studio for instance they know how to do this stuff there are developers out there we have a community out there that knows how to build these processes how do we make all of these things this like this end to end business process that i'm talking about how do we make it such that it continues to be as intuitive as simple for our customers such that they can build on top of these things and still get the benefit of this end to end business processes right that is one of the challenges from a, just from a scenario and a definition perspective this brings in the corresponding engineering challenge in this for it i would say is like uh, incremental process that we have gone through and we are still going through that process we looked at each aspect of the system we looked at what it meant to define a process like this typical rpa process is something that starts on a robot runs to completion in our scenario the business process does not end when one rpa process ends rpa process is just one small part of a bigger business process now how do you model this what does this mean right how do we bring all of these things together and how are we getting humans involved in this whole process that brings in concepts like you know tasks there is another terminology that is used called long running workflows right workflows and long running workflows so long running workflows have potentially embedded workflows in them have embedded tasks in them and these tasks are assigned to human beings the task might be assigned to human beings directly to one person might be assigned to a team might be assigned to a hierarchy might be assigned to different queues and from there how do you model this whole thing in a simple manner all of these kinds of stuff we have been having to think through uh, and look at like doing all of these things with keeping it still as straightforward and simple and in line with what our customers are used to has been i think the bigger challenge compared to everything else we could probably just go build everything from scratch using completely brand new technologies and all that stuff but that would have been a a problem for our customers like our customers would not have been able to make the best use of all of these capabilities until they went through a huge process of onboarding and all that stuff we want to avoid that so we have been spending time and trying to get it in a way that it fits into this ecosystem we are slowly getting there mostly there and uh, i think that's what will end up happening Lastly, we're going to hear about a product from the more logistical side, uh, bringing RPA into the cloud. This new product is hugely important and allows our customers to start using our products without having to do expensive and time-consuming server installations. So my name is uh, Venki. I'm a product manager with UiPath based out of Bangalore. Currently, the product is an on-premise offering. So we are working to ensure how do we bring the product to cloud so that any customer who does not have to go ahead and set up this whole infrastructure for themselves, and how do we re- remove or reduce the friction for customers to start their automation journey and continue the automation journey? This is definitely a big benefit for all the small companies who really wanted to start the automation journey, but struggle because of either the cost or the lack of resources in terms of IT management and other things. So what we are going to provide uh, as part of this offering. 
doing is to enable customers to have a place where they can just go ahead and start using the orchestrator which we provide in the cloud and uh, buy robots and get going rather than implementing the whole nine yards of uh, setting up a whole on-premise system. Uh, so some of the challenges we face since we are building this product from ground up in, in terms of cloud and there are a lot of challenges in terms of how the existing product so compatibility is with the offering which you're going to provide because traditionally we have built this product working for on-prem the what are the changes which we need to do to ensure that it's scalable in the cloud and it has got less issues when we go in the cloud world specifically with the on the product so when we decided to build the cloud api we defined a certain functionalities and decided this is the way we, we need to go forward we, we, when we implemented them in a couple of sprints and once we started demoing it with the rest of the teams we realized that we have overcome complicated it for the first version. So that was one of our fail fast moments where we realized we got the feedbacks within the team with the other product teams and we scaled it back and made it as simple as possible so that in version one where the users have the ability to go ahead and start using the product with as less friction as possible. So the two things which stuck in my mind for that start simple. Uh, never over complicated because you can always build as much as you can rather than uh, restricting it and uh, building it again so that's number one and second most important thing I've realized is early feedback so when you have an idea you build a prototype of it and reach out to as many number of people within the organization or someone with, who has got experience so that they ha can go ahead and give you feedback or criticize the product so that you can make it better rather than uh, waiting for eight weeks or 10 weeks or 12 weeks and then developing the product and then realizing that the customer may not like it. So hopefully that gives you some insight into what it's like to be a product manager at UiPath. Uh, our team in India is tackling some of the most important challenges in the RPA industry. These products are radically redefining the way people do work all around the world. It's a really interesting, stimulating environment and you can just feel the passion that comes from every single person that works here. We are hiring for all kinds of roles all over the world, but especially in our product department. So if you think you would be a good fit, head to uipath.com careers for more information.